here we are going to see some examples of the argon metallics that include metal alkyls as well as metal aryls that forms the basis of our topic. Okay. Now the direct re reaction of uh, metal alkyls are there are a few examples of the direct reaction of metal with uh, an organic halides that includes lithium, magnesium, aluminium or zinc and uh, lead to some important uh, synthesis of compounds such as uh, C2H5 and GbR. I think you are aware of this one. This we call it as we have been calling it as the Grignard reagent, which we have been using for uh, uh, the synthesis of uh, uh, that is the alkylation reactions and the Grignard uh, RMGXI or, uh, that is RMGX we have been using for alkylating agents. So this is a very key reaction and very important reaction in which you are using zinc with ethyl iodide to form ethyl zinc iodide and then finally that gives rise to uh, zinc uh, alkyl compound. But more important is magnesium reacting with uh, ethyl bromide in the presence of ether giving rise to uh, ethyl magnesium bromide which I have been telling that uh, is being used as an alkylating agent. Okay, sodium alkyls and aryls are not usually made by direct reaction. That is, there is some risk uh, associated with uh, sodium directly using with uh, the uh, organic halides. This very reactive, very reactive organosodium compounds can react rapidly with uh, any excess of organic halides. So that will give rise to an excessive heat and may even result in explosion. In order to prepare sodium alkyl or in laboratory scale, sodium is first treated with mercury. I think we are aware of this amalgamation. The, one of the major applications of mercury. Alkyl mercury may be prepared by the reaction of mercury with organic halide, but only if the metal is in the form of sodium amalgam. So here it is an example of uh, sodium reacting with uh, mercury and the presence of the methyl chloride giving rise to uh, alkyl uh, mercury that is this is also an important reaction because you are using an organic compound with uh, a metal so metal this is also found as uh, one of the basis of the organometallics the direct reaction of lead with ethyl chloride is used to produce the gasoline additive the gasoline additive is uh, I think we are using it as the anti knock agent there is always uh, explosion possible with all the hydrocarbons so to avoid that they are adding tetraethyl lead which is uh, uh, tetraethyl lead okay so we now have a lot of lead in the atmosphere therefore uh, we started using unleaded petrol so that was one of the initial use of uh, organometallic compound as an anti agent that reduces the explosion and it's called as well as gasoline and tube this reaction is taking place with uh, ethyl chloride in the presence of uh, sodium and uh, lead giving rise to some sodium chloride salt. A number of transient metals have been vaporized and uh, may then react directly with organic halides and hydrocarbons. For example, palladium is vaporized and co-condensed with CCHBR to get an orange powder. So it's a, it's a kind of dye. So inorganic dyes are very long lasting but they are expensive compared to organic dyes. So here is C6H5Br which is reacted with uh, the palladium in the form of condensed vapor which gives rise to some polymeric uh, palladium bromide derivative. Finally you are adding the alkyl derivatives or the organic derivatives to get uh, a palladium complex. Okay, Palladium complex with uh, some alkyl derivatives there. So this is what they call it as the orange powder. <coughs> I think you are aware of the titanium yellow. So this is also a kind of palladium yellow. Okay. So three examples, if they ask you what are the basic uh, examples of organometallic compounds and what their uses are, then you can use Grignard reagent, tetraethyl lead and 
palladium complex. One is used as organic uh, alkylating agent, the other one is an antinoch agent, the third one is a coloring agent. So after three examples, we now come to the reactions of anionic alkylating agents with metal halides or oxides. These reactions produce the uh, metal methyl aluminum oxide. It's quite similar to aluminum isopropoxide. Aluminum isopropoxide. I think you can recall this. Where do we use aluminum isopropoxide? This is used in places where you want a Bayer Villager oxidation. Villager oxidation. Some oxidation reactions we use in organic chemistry. So, one such example is a Bayer Villager oxidation in which it is prepared by reaction of lead oxide with aluminum uh, alkylating agents. Similarly, they are using BF3 with uh, a diphenyl aluminum compound to get a BPS3 plus ALF3. So, these are all the anionic alkylating agents with uh, metal halides and oxides. So, this is also another example there. Now, the next example is the metallation reaction. By metallation, we often get this idea of the uh, ferrocene molecule. This is one of the foremost example. Here, ferrocene is uh, reacted with uh, butyl lithium compound forming a uh, lithium that is the uh, organometallic compound. This is an organ and this is a metallic compound with the uh, uh, butyl compound. So, phenoxetine is another example which reacts with the uh, lithium butyl derivative by forming a lithium complex there. Okay. They have the unusual distinction of possessing relatively acidic hydrogen. Acidic hydrogen means, I think, you know, the hydrogen that we have in uh, a steel uh, is immediately, because of the presence of this uh, large pi-cyclic compound, this becomes uh, acidic in nature. Therefore, it is very reactive. And we have seen some of the examples in uh, in previous organic reactions, which we, we also call it as the perihydrogens. And here, this is metallated by treating with suitable metallic base lithation reaction involving nucleophilic attack of the hydrocarbon portion of lithium. So, nucleophilic activity, hydrocarbon, this is the hydrocarbon portion of the lithium containing the agent, the butyl group or a hydrogen atom the compound undergoing methylation. Thus, for methylation to occur, the hydrogen atom must be relatively acidic. This is an important condition. The following evidences highlight this fact. First, Lithation of uh, phenocythene is the n butyl lithium occurs uh, ortho to the oxygen rather than to the sulfur. Where is it? You can see that here the oxygen and sulfur atoms both are there. Right? Here you have oxygen and here you have sulfur. And uh, the lithium is going to the ortho position to the ortho position of uh, the oxygen, not to the, the lithium, which we are getting substitute is going to this particular place. It doesn't go to this particular place. It doesn't go there. The reason is oxygen is uh, uh, having greater minus A effect. So this is an electronic effect. We have studied this in the initial years of our graduation. Electronic effect and we call it as the inductive effect. So, inductive effect is the electron releasing through the sigma bonds and through all the connected bonds there. So, the inductive effect is electron withdrawing in nature for oxygen. So, more electron is towards this. As a result of this, this hydrogen gets a small positive charge there. So, this hydrogen here, you get a small positive charge and then this facilitates a, a nucleophilic attack. Nucleophilic attack. From where? From this particular hydrocarbon, but it is connected with methyl. So, it goes and deposits lithium there, but it doesn't go to this particular place. So, you don't get a, a Li here. Okay. So, the reason is the some great chemistry is there. That is minus A effect. If plus A effect was there, the effect could have been a different thing. The second uh, part of this is higher units of lithiated products are obtained in polar coordinating solvents. First thing is minus A effect. Second thing is the polar solvent. 
polar solvent or as we use always the aqueous solvents which have got some charges like water molecule non polar solvents will be something like a cs uh, that is the chloroform and non polar solvents or even some kind of ethers you know they are non polar solvents in these solvents lithation becomes very difficult uh, because you know it is able it should be able to polarize a, a particular uh, reactant the third remarkable thing about the first one is minus i second one is polar third one is metallization reaction is a performed if tetramethylethylene diamine is added to the system this tmed you know it acts as, as a catalyst and uh, the reason is that lithium is strongly complex with the diamine thereby rendering the organic even more carbon ionic so so the tmd addition you know makes the lithium more complex with this particular uh, diamine and uh, it makes the group more carbon ionic iron ion is a negative charge thing so it is facilitating this particular reaction so you have to write uh, these three important points you know in the examination if they ask you why the metallation occurs you know in the uh, in in some some compounds some organo uh, that organic compounds such as uh, ferrocene and such as in the reaction with uh, the butyl lithium compounds okay some of them are also having some intermolecular metallization reactions involving transmitters and uh, this is a very advanced you don't have to go into this this is a kind of dye azo dye and it reacts with palladium tetrachloride and forms a very good uh, complex you can note this bond you know this is a this is a bond in which the electrons are more towards uh, uh, the metal atom coordinate bond Okay, but it helps in stabilization of this particular entire complex. It's entire complex, and this one is intramolecular. This takes place within the molecule itself. Here you can see that these two molecules are getting uh, attacked within themselves, and uh, it's probably the electrophilic substitution. In this mechanism, the formation of normal conjugation complex is followed by the elimination of H plus here. Okay, this is the H plus there. The latter step being facilitated the formation of a pyrene complex. Pi arrange means you know the pi system is there. Suppose th this is a pi system there, and uh, it is connected by means of a uh, nitrogen compounds with uh, with the triple pi bonds. I mean that double pi bond and one sigma bond. That is what we call as the arrange system. So in this arrange system, you have got a complex. The metal directly goes and bonds with this. Okay, this is an intermediate. It's an intermediate, so you don't have any proof of that. The formation of an arene complex, that is what it is being said. So this is an intermediate. Mercuration reactions are important examples of metal hydrogen mixing. The reaction of benzene with mercuric acetate in acetic acid at elevated temperature gives phenyl mercuric acetate. And in some reactions, ferrocene gives ferrocene mercuric acetate. Here is the reaction, C6H6 with HgOAC. Sometimes this will be missing, and they will be asked, "You, what is this?" So you can simply make a, an arene complex there. C6H6, you know, no carbon attacks there. This is a this is considered as a pi system. Okay, and uh, mercury gas state directly goes there and forms a uh, organometallic compound. Okay, now metallation by mechanism one to addition complex to unsaturated substitution is being discussed now. Here the metallation occurs through the general process uh, with where uh, G is H X R R. H is hydrogen, X is halogen, R is any alkyl group. Yeah? So you can see the M splits there and G, M and G split there, and this double bonded portion goes and sits inside this, and it occurs through this is what we call it as a general process. And most important of this is a hydroboration reaction. Hydroboration is uh, some kind of reduction reaction we have seen in many organic, uh, or we are going to see them in the organic cases. Cis addition of elements of diborane to olefin acetylene is a very good example. Cis addition of elements of diborane. This is the diborane there. Okay, this is diborane there, and uh, this is in the form of olefins. Here you have the olefins. They react to give a diborane. I mean that is a uh, boron hydride types of complex. So you can even draw it like this. Uh, instead of putting this three, you can put this entire molecule here. And here, this is one unit. This is second unit, and this will be the the. So as you can see, the 
hydroboration is a kind of reaction in which you also get the type of organometallic compound. Hydroalumination reaction involves the addition of an aluminum complex to this system. This is a pi system and you can see that at the temperature of 500 degrees C, this uh, the re the reaction uh, is generally, generally similar to hydroboration in which you, you get uh, the complex. This is not very useful, but uh, this is very important for you from an examination point of view. Terminal olefins experience very readily at the elements of tin and hydrogen in a hydroestanation reaction. Hydroboration is one such important reaction. Hydroestanation is quite similar to this. What you can do is you can just take a particular complex with some pi system and then you can add this uh, trialkyl stannous hydride and you get a complex. This involves a transition metal and uh, is a very good example of a very good reducing agent in uh, many organic compounds. Hydrogen bonds are also important examples of the type because the insertion of olefins into transition metal hydrogen bond is implicated in many industrial catalyzed transition metals. So these are the three examples there. Here is uh, platinum. Platinum is being used to, and uh, is uh, made to react with a CS2 double bond, CS2 system, another pi system. So platinum initially makes a pi, uh, platinum pi arene complex. And then under heat and pressure, it uh, rearranges to form a, an alkylated compound. So this is a metal and this is you have the alkyl there. And uh, it is also used in many reducing agents. So, and uh, some of the examples in organometallic chemistry are going to see in future. Right? The oxymetallation is the next thing in which uh, the most predominant is the use of mercury for oxymercuration. The addition of elements of hydrogen O2 olefin is a synthetically useful reaction that we used to introduce the hydroxy, acetoxy, and alkoxy in natural system. Hydroxy, acetoxy, and alkoxy system in an unsaturated system. So here it is. This is a tertiary butyl compound, and the presence of a tetrahydrofuran mercuric acetate reacts with it to form a tertiary butyl derivative of the mercuric acetate complex. And there are two isomers here, isomer 1 and isomer 2. Okay, so you get uh, a hydroxyl compound there. Quite similarly, you can get uh, and uh, alkoxy and acetoxy. Alkoxy is O or dash and uh, uh, acetoxy means uh, O or CH3 something. So you can just uh, substitute in the place of H and get the, the particular complexes. The most example, most important example of the Organometallics is the use of the palladium tetrachloride, which is used in the Wacker's process, very essential for you, is often asked. It's used to convert the CH2 double bond CH2 into CH3 CH4. So this is a uh, pi system, ethylene, and this is a completely saturated compound in which you get a stalled So you see, see, you are introducing an oxygen in there. They may even ask you, how do you convert the pi system or an alkene system? into uh, a, an aldehydic system. So the best part is the use of the Wacker's process. The Wacker's process using, uses this palladium tetrachloride as a, a, catalysis, as a catalysis. And uh, it uses it is used for oxidation of ethylene to acetaldehyde. And it's a very important thing. We have got some mechanisms you'll see later in uh, this details later. Then halometallation, insertion of olestines and acetylenes into metal hydrogen bonds is also there. This is quite similar to previous example you have seen, but this one is a tribromoborane in the presence of pradine, an important reagent there. Important reagent there. So here you can see that uh, the uh, double bond is being converted into a single bond system with an attachment of a Br on one side and BBr2 on the other side. So quite similar, the triborane system you can get uh, three such complexes for further reactions, but this one is stopped here itself because it proves very efficient there in the can in, the can in many uh, reduction reactions okay the last one not being very uh, important for you it uh, involves the organometallation reaction of aluminium reactions such as this involve metallization of alkenes and alkenes with the carbon sigma bonds the most important of these are the carbial alumination carbalumination reaction this particular reaction is called as the carbonyl in which the 
addition of aluminium and chloride to the unsaturated system is there so this one is an unsaturated system this one is an unsaturated system and this one is the alkyl uh, alumin carbon elimination reaction what is meant by carbon elimination reaction you can remember tetraethyl tri aluminium reacts with the diethylene giving rise to one example in which you have got uh, c2h4 n times and c2 and followed by c2h5 there or you can get the more number of c2h4p where you get a 3m is equal to n plus p plus q oh, this 3m you know is is you can get uh, if you if you get 3m equal to 2 you will get 2 here if you get 3m equal to 4 you will get 4 here if you get 3m equal to 6 you will get 6 here that is what is being mentioned there okay so uh, this is not very significant reaction but it's also another very good example of the reaction so we stop here and see for, and look for uh, further reactions with examples in mechanism and on this list